Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fabulous day. So today I'm coming back with some more ideas of things that you can do with coffee filters. So coffee filters, really, you can get quite inexpensively. You can pick them up at the dollar store. And so what I've done this time, I've made envelopes with my coffee filters. So this one I did a little bit more decorating up. I still have my arm issue, my arm's still broken, waiting for physical therapy. And so, so it's a little bit hard to do some things, but I wanted to show it to you. So what I did with this one, I placed a doily behind it. Because the paper is kind of thin, I glued that there and then you can still see it through the actual coffee filter. So this right here, this rose is just a sticker that I got at the dollar store like that too and then with some baker's twine and what I did I tucked in the other half of this doily and so you can see the doily coming through the envelope as well what I like about these envelopes that I made I have a little lip on the bottom and let me show you why so when you have your book let's say you want to put this in the book you can put it in a belly band or something but with this lip on it what you can do is take it to a page and then take that lip, glue it to the back side of, side of the page and then you have a wonderful flip right there of your envelope. You can also do it at the bottom of your book. Place it at the bottom page and then it would flip down. So just an idea, something that I like. And if you don't like that little added little part, all you have to do is clip it off. So let me show you how it's made. So this is the coffee filter, it's just a standard size coffee filter. And so what you do at the beginning, you take your coffee filter and there's just kind of a natural line right there and you're gonna fold it along that line. So that line is just about, I think it's like two and a quarter inches ish. Yeah, so I have it at two and a quarter inches. So just to give you an idea, right along in here is two and a quarter inches. So now what you wanna do, you wanna cut up piece that's going to be your little pattern piece. This piece is cut at four inches by five and a half inches. So if your coffee filter is the same size of mine, when I tuck it in there, it'll reach so it just comes to the corner of those sides right there. And so that's going to be the base of my envelope. So what I want to do and what you're going to want to do. I'm going to take my cutting board. You can cut it by hand. It does it does have all the ripples in it and so it just makes it a little bit more difficult to cut by hand. So with your little um, pattern piece in there, kind of put it to the edge of where it'll cut. I find it best to cut when you have your blade in the middle rather than starting at the end and going. If you start at the end it's more likely to buckle up. So go ahead and um, start cutting it. When you get to the place that it's doubled over, I would go ahead and lift up your blade one more time, put it in the middle, and see, you can see even right there it's pulling, and then give it a cut. If it pulls, just pull it out and cut by hand. So the other ones I did cut, I didn't have, when I used this method in the middle, I didn't have a lot of problems with it buckling up. So just pay attention to that. Okay, I've got this one in. I'm going to put this right up to the edge again. So I've got it there nicely. I've got my blade in the middle someplace on the paper and I'm going to start cutting. So actually as I think about it, this blade here probably needs changed and that's why it's dragging a little bit more than the other cutter I use. So best if you use a sharper blade. And then the last one by turning it over, I can still see. I can still w see where the paper's at because I. Um, you can see the, through the coffee filter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that part just gingerly, and then I'm going to cut the rest off right there. So save these because we're going to still use those pieces. Let me keep this out. So for the other piece now, so we've got this cut out, right? That's going to be with the top of my envelope. And now I'm going to cut the, the inside of my envelope right here. This is the piece that we're going to cut out now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it on here and just, just do what I did with the other one. 
get in the middle so that all four sides are are within the cutting place. Nothing goes over the edge of the filter. Rotate it and just keep on cutting along that cut line. That one's dragging a little. I don't think I'll change this blade quite yet. Just because I can. It's hard with my arm. So it's got to make it through. So cut all four edges. Okay, save those little end pieces. So now I have this part. This one did scrunch up a little bit and it goes back to the sharpness of your blade. Make sure your blade is sharp. If not, um, have your scissors ready so they can cut along the edge. Okay, so with this in there, I can hold it up and I can see that this piece I can safely cut off a little bit more to cut off the place that was a little bit off. So take your piece right here if you're going to sew it with the sewing machine. You can also just glue it. I'm going to glue this one here rather than sew it, but I'm going to tell you how to sew it. On one of the long sides, go ahead and sew along that edge so that when you open it up, you have the inside of the pocket right here sewn. So sew that and then you're going to put the rest of it together and sew with the other. Okay, once you have this edge sewn, you're going to want that at the top closest to your flap. So that's the sewn edge right there. And what you're going to do, you're going to pull it down about a half of an inch. See there's right there. It's actually, this one's closer to three quarters of an inch, right in between. You're going to pull it down a little bit though so that you have a lip right here rather than it being right at the top at the edge where the envelope opens up at. That way it's, it's easier for you to put things in and out of the envelope. It also is what creates that little bottom flap right here. So this is the flap. This is the portion that you can put underneath your page. So you're going to pull that down about a quarter, I mean, excuse me, about a half an inch, and then you're going to go ahead and start sewing. So you're going to sew all along this edge. Actually, it's easier if you turn it over and sew it. What I did with my first one also, I placed just a little bit of glue stick uh, on the edges and made sure it was dry and then went over with my sewing machine. So. So with the, with the pieces together, this is the top of the envelope. You're going to sew from here down, just down to the bottom of this, across, not to the very bottom of the flap, but just across there, and then back up this side up to where the top of the envelope goes. And there you go. That's all the sewing that you do. So I had it this way. I sewed down, over, and up. If you want to, later on you can sew across the top. I'll show you about doing that too. So for this right now, what I'm going to do is glue it. So with gluing it, I will see a little bit of the glue coming through. We'll see what it looks like though. I could take my um, pen or pencil along it as well and make little markings. Okay. Oops, I didn't follow my rule. If I want it, I need it to go a half inch down so that I have the bottom lip. Okay. So there I've got a half inch down and that folds over. So when I get to do my page, I can either fold this and then glue it to the page or I can just trim that off if I don't want that bottom lip. And that's all it is to the construction of this envelope. Now if you want a ruffle like this one, which I absolutely love, what you're going to do is you're going to take your leftover pieces of 
um, your doily. Find one that kind of fits well. And then what I did, I just put a little line of glue along the top. Place one side and then in place the other edge. And then I kind of scrunched it up in the middle just to kind of fit. And so there's one layer of my ruffle. Now I'm going to grab another um, piece. And if you don't have a very pretty piece, I mean, you could go ahead and cut another another piece of, uh, of the, the liner. So this one will work. It's got a little jagged edge on it, so I'm going to kind of just cut that a little bit. And I'm going to take a look at the size, too. If it's too long, what I'm going to do is just trim this top edge right here. This one looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay some more glue on that edge. Place the two outer edges first. And then just kind of scrunch these up, making sure that my ruffle does hit the top of the envelope there. And there you go, you have a nice pretty top. Isn't that sweet? So this is what I did with that one. <clears throat> I put a rose there. You could also put something like that here. I'm just going to cut this one off. Which means I won't put the lip around it. So with this, I can do... Um, I could put a button in there, which would be sweet. Always my buttons, right? This is another flower from the dollar store. I could even put that at the bottom someplace. And another thing I can do is um, have a something down here as a as a tab that's going to be pulled up. So I could do something like this, but with a curved edge, a little softer looking edge, and that would pull up. Oh, this might be sweet too. So I didn't do the, the coffee dyed ones because I didn't have it, I didn't have a coffee dyed one upstairs with me, but it would look really great with the coffee dyed as well. So with this one, I am going to, I'm going to put that one there, and I might see with a button. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one up. I put my glue all the way up when I first did it I have to be careful that it didn't stick so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take a little piece of cheesecloth this is a real airy cheesecloth put that down And then I want to do a monochromatic with this one. And so I'm going to just tie this crochet thread around the bottom. Just has a really nice vintage, like a linen look. Like they're going to go out and play tennis or something, you know, that look how they would always wear the white linen. What was that movie with Brad Pitt in Montana? Was it Montana? And there was the outdoor tennis court. Anyway, it makes me think of that because they, they had on the white linen for that. So I want the bow to be more over here. 
It's, it's a little, okay, I'm not going to do it right now because it's a little hard for me to do my arm. I will do it off camera though, and I'll show you a picture of it. So that's what I did with this one right here. I placed the bow on it. Here's the ribbon. So you can see the difference is what it looks like with a high contrast thread. This is the thread I had in my machine, my machine as opposed to no, no thread. Um, or a thread that was the same color as your um, thing. It, it just has a different look and a different feel to it. So you can play around with yours and come up with some ideas. With this one here, this is a sticker I thought would be fun to put on it. That's a um, butterfly. I'm going to cut this. And use that as the tab right there and then I'm going to take I'm going to do a little stamping on it okay I do want a little in the middle there too. Not a lot, but Use your normal decorating ideas and things, and you can just make a really pretty fun envelope. So that's my idea for right now. I'm in love with this little ruffle envelope, and I think it just turned out sweet by putting the doily in the inside. And whatever you place within the inside, like let's say we do this, you're going to see it coming through your envelope and it just looks wonderfully mysterious. It's like you just want to open it up and see what's in the inside. So look at that one with the butterfly. Isn't that great? So I hope you have fun with this idea and I will see you later on with another idea. And I hope you have a great, great week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.